Alright, let's get stuck into some programming in Prolog where I'll start to go through some very simple predicates and just talk about my general thought process in how I go about piecing it all together. Things like how I derive the base case and how I work through the recursion and stuff like that. So for this predicate, we basically just want to sum all the numbers in a series up to some number n. So the client will pass in a number and we'll calculate the sum of all the numbers up until that number. So in this example, 1, 2 and 3 added together will be 6. So I start by visualizing how I want the client to write this query in the console. So they'll pass in a number that they want the sum for and then a variable that will end up storing the final calculated result in. In Prolog, Prolog doesn't have uh, return statements that we can um, assign the return value back to a variable so instead we need to provide a variable in the um, query signature which will be binded to a value that we end up calculating in our recursive definition so um, there's two ways um, to do the recursion and in Prolog recursion is used to calculate uh, the most, the majority of things. So um, recursion is needed to work out this um, sum here. So we can either use tail recursion or um, just normal recursion. But um, if you've watched my previous video on tail recursion, we'll go through an example of using tail recursion, which makes use of an accumulator variable. So because we need another variable, we need to make this three arguments so it can store um, the variable for the accumulator but we don't really I mean do we really want the, the query um, caller having to write the accumulator value in um, because they could initially set the accumulator to zero which is what we want and we'll simply progressively add these numbers to it to derive the answer six but additionally the query caller could write any number in here but if it's anything but zero, the accumulator value provided here is going to just get added to, added onto by these numbers, which means the final result will be completely wrong. Um, so we don't really want to expose the, the implementation details to the the query caller. So we can we can like abstract and hide these away by just exposing a simpler public interface. Um, which you know most other programming pr programming languages um, encourage, and in Prolog we do this by creating uh, rules, and a rule consists of a head and a body, and the head's pretty much like the method signature to call or the function signature to call. So we can just write this as being n to denote the number we want to keep the sum for, and then the fact that the result will be binded to the variable here called result um, and then this is everything to the left of this this means that we're creating a rule this is the rule head and we'll create a rule body now and essentially this is just binding it's going to bind 3 to n and result will be unknown at this point in time because we'll work it out as we go but this is when we need to sort of set up the accumulator because we don't want this is what the caller will see but this is what we'll actually do we'll call another method here that will set up the accumulator and we'll give the accumulator initial value of zero because um, that makes sense in this case to start at zero because then we'll just progressively add these numbers to zero to get the final answer and that will work across all cases so uh, we need to implement this now as another rule so I just think of these as calling another function and now we're implementing that function so but in Prolog they're actually rules because that's just the way it does things and just think of a rule as like being sort of a place to define um, a sequence of actions to execute so 
we can't leave this at zero because we need a variable here. So zero can be binded to this variable. And everything that we define here will be binded to these variables here. So three will be here, three will bind to n, zero will bind to the accumulator, and result will still have nothing. So now we'll start, um, this is where the recursion will need to be defined. So we can start by saying to ourselves, you know, what do we need to do here? And, you know, it, because we're using an accumulator, we need to start adding up the progressive calculations as we go. So it would make sense to add, um, add to the accumulator. Um, and then it makes sense to decrement n because um, decrement n to make progress towards the base case because we need to you know progress um, towards the base case so the recursion eventually stops if we start at n if we start at 3 sorry we need to eventually work our way down to nothing to 0 and then when we hit 0 it's probably a good place to stop um, so yeah we need to decrement n and then after we do all this stuff it's probably a good idea to call ourselves again recursively or just call ourselves again recursively and um, this will have the effect of eventually working towards the goal of base case which will work out um, as we go so following our recipe here let's just add to the um, because n is passed in as a value initially it will be 3 so we want to set the accumulator to 3 here um, because we need to start giving the accumulator values to accumulate the result, right? So, um, we would do this by setting a new accumulator is the old accumulator plus n and is is used for arithmetic which means everything to the right of is will be evaluated so um, n is originally 3 accumulator equals 0 to start with the result is a question mark because we don't know. So new accumulator will be equal to uh, 0 plus 3. So new accumulator will be, th will be 3. And the reason why you have to create a new variable here is because you can't you can't write this because in Prolog once a variable already is binded to a value you can't change that value. So you have to change um, you have to create a new variable to capture the new value here and that's what we do next we go about decrementing n and you can use this inbuilt predicate um, which if you put a variable in the first argument it will return you the value one less than the second argument so if n is 3 2 will be binded to deck n which is exactly exactly what we want you could have easily just done this deck n is n minus 1 could have easily done that it's the same thing just something different um, and then now is probably a good time to call ourselves I'll just copy and paste that um, and we need to pass in these new values so new accumulator so you want to progressively work towards the base case so we need to update these values to one less for the n accumulator captures the new um, progressively calculated value and this is the tail recursion part we're progressively calculating the value as we go down result is still unknown so I'll just you know write these in so it's easy to talk about it Decans two new accumulators three. So put a full stop here to end it. Now we recursively call ourselves. It would you can think of it as creating a new stack frame. And but because we're using tail recursion, it's most likely going to be op optimized by a prolog compiler. In which case, it's probably just going to treat it as like an iteration loop. Therefore, um, no new stack frames will be created 
we've just set up new bindings for this one so it's going to be far more efficient but just think of it as creating a new stat frame for visualization purposes so this means um, we'll call ourselves again now n will be 2, the accumulator will be 3 result is still unknown we'll update the accumulator to be um, 2 plus 3 so new accumulator will be 5 n will be decremented to 1 and we recursively call ourselves again so these will be updated these will be the values passed into the new call update the accumulator again so the accumulator will be 6 we'll decrement n to 0 and you'll notice this is the final result here and we're sort of at the lowest point of recursion now and we can think about our base case because we need to stop now so to do a base case you just write it as the same name but you have to create a new rule for it so we need to match on a few things we need to because um, n is 0 in the first argument position we want to match on that so you write 0 there to denote that's what we're looking for in the second argument position we need a variable here to bind get binder to the value of 6 so you, you can just define a variable here it can be anything you want like that's a variable name in prolog because it's got a capital letter L to start with but yeah, obviously it's not a very good name so just call it anything you want but accumulator is probably a good idea and we need a way to transfer the accumulated result which is the actual real result to the result that the query caller needs to know about so uh, we can transfer these across by just calling them the same name because this is going to equal 6 because of the same variable this will always equal this will also equal 6 therefore the value will be binded to this result in the third argument position now this seems weird so to explain this further I'll just show you this diagram so these are our stack frames in blue here and we're right down the bottom here in the base case position right down the end so this is our base case this here is this last stack frame so what we need to do is is um, the first arguments um, get matched unified um, because this last the second argument ha now has 6 so this variable here takes on the value 6 because these are the same variable names this value for this variable is also 6 because of the same thing and if you watch my unification video um, I've explained how a relationship is set up between two unbinded variables in the unification process which means these variables in the third argument position share a memory address um, so therefore they share the same value and it's easy to forget this because you know there's so much stuff to remember but you know, this is really the key point to how Prolog really works and it's it's basically just um, doing the same thing as a return value because normally you just do a return statement like here would normally just return 6 but instead you've got to use binding and shared memory address locations to yeah pass the variable pass the result back up so when 6 gets when 6 gets binded here to this variable this variable is the same and it'll be like okay cool I've got a relationship with the variable in the third argument position above me and we share this low memory location called G1 I'm going to put 6 in here so the stack frame above me will know the result I've just produced and this is the key part really because notice that all the result variables have the address G1 
So as soon as I put 6 here, all the result variables you know above me uh, will know the result and these will bubble up to the top here um, for the query caller and they'll see the result 6. Now because we're using tail recursion you know these stack frames probably don't exist but just think of them as existing as a conceptual way to think about what's actually happening. Um, so yeah, because we've already calculated the value, placing the final value into the memory address that um, result is listening to, so to speak, will cause the query variable provided um, to store the result of the sum. So yeah, that's how that's how that works, um, and. That's 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 the whole recursion stuff sort of figured out, but we just need to add one more condition here because after the base case gets hit, we'll go into the recursion again and we'll end up decrementing n again, which will be n minus one, then it will go n minus two, n minus three, n minus four, um, infinitely. But we want to stop when you know we reach zero. So if we just add one more, <laughs> I wrote if they're like normal programming because you know how you're so used to doing base cases, um, defining them first. Um, we don't actually do that in Prolog. In Prolog, you just go, you define your condition. So the first thing that we check is, is n greater than zero? If it is, then we continue on to do this stuff. If n isn't greater than zero, then we fail here and terminate this whole thing, and that's what stops the recursion. Um, so yeah, we've we've got everything in place. Um, let's try it out. Remember to reload your file. So sum n or sum for three. Result six. Cool. You can have this variable called anything. Sum for 5 I think should be 15. Yep, alright. Looks like it's all working. But yeah, that's the general process that I go through. And I'll post some more videos um, in the next week or so. But yeah, thanks for watching.